Hello everyone, Luke here. Welcome to another My Team video. We've had the summer break and it is now time for round 14 of our first season, the Belgian Grand Prix, where we're going to see if we can carry on the form that we showed last time out in Hungary, where we managed to get our best finish for the last couple of races, actually. It took 8th position on the last lap. Unfortunately, Nick could only finish down in 20th. We stay 9th in the Drivers' Championship. The team stays 7th in the Constructors' Championship. We were hoping to have some big R&D developments ready for this race, but as you can see, our weight reduction development failed. So that's going to put us on the back foot ever so slightly because I imagine a lot of the teams will have improved their cars quite a lot. We should have a lot more development, so ready in time for Monza. So we'll just have to see how we do. Around the longest circuit on the calendar, it's time for the Belgian Grand Prix. Let's get qualifying underway then for the Belgium Grand Prix. There was quite a lot of rain in practice. Thankfully, though, it's going to be dry for qualifying, as you can see. And it is forecast to be dry during the race as well. Heading up then through Eau Rouge and Radion. Flat out through there. See how high up the grid we can get then around here. Put plenty of pressure engine components in. I do think later on into the season, I might have to take a penalty to change some of them as they will be fairly warm by the time we get to Abu Dhabi and the last race of the season. Not doing too bad at the moment in our usual just outside the top 10 spot. Let's see if we can actually sneak into the top 10 might be pretty good but then we won't get the then we won't get the fresher tyres so 11 4 12 position would be absolutely ideal. Poo a very tricky corner you can easily hit that curb and it can throw you wide as I did there. Just about getting away with it. Coming into the campus chicane now. Probably carried a bit too much speed on entry. Don't want to run too wide on the exit. And again there, just slightly slightly missing the apex. Heading over the curb. Flat out now towards the bus stop chicane. 40th position at the moment. That's about standard for our qualifying performances so far this season. Can we use the power of the engine to push us any further up the grid? Heavy braking for the bus stop chicane. And let's see what sort of time we can do. Didn't really get a chance to set a dry qualifying simulation. Doesn't seem to have affected us though. 12th position at this moment in time. So a very good lap. Definitely happy with that. And with qualifying complete, Let's review our top three today. Bottas, Hamilton, and Sebastian Vettel. Well, that wraps up qualifying, but don't worry. We'll be back tomorrow as we head into the Grand Prix. So you can see their 12th position, not too far off the top 10, but we do get fresh tyre choice. Lando Norris down in 15th, our rival, so it's good to beat him. And Nick comfortably beating both of the Williams, which is really the bare minimum I expect from him, so... I'd say that puts us in a good position for the race. Let's see how we can do then. It's one of my favourite tracks to drive around. Hopefully, this will be a really good race and we can score some good points. We're in Belgium once again for today's round of the Formula One World Championship. It's a race the great Ayrton Senna won six times. And in 2019, Charles Leclerc became the first driver to take their maiden win here since Michael Schumacher in 1992. Spa-Francorchamps today, a circuit that spans 4.35 miles. There are tons of elevation changes along the way too. 19 corners making up this circuit, with nine of those to the right and the remaining 10 to the left. This track is a great one for fans of pure speed. The average lap speed comes close to a whopping 145 miles an hour. And as always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Ant, you're no stranger to surviving the melee of turn one. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? There are three main things to worry about there, Crofty. Positioning, awareness, and discipline. First, you have to put your car in a bit of space and make sure you have room to react to what the others are doing. Then you have to watch your mirrors and listen to the sounds around you to get a sense of where everyone is. And finally, just don't get too greedy. Just because a gap exists doesn't always mean you should go for it. 
Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position, and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Vettel, Leclerc, Max Verstappen, and Perez, Albon, Stroll, Sainz, and Esteban Ocon, Raikkonen, the owner driver, Daniel Ricciardo, and Gasly, Norris, Fiat, Kevin Magnussen, and Roman Grosjean, De Vries, Russell, Giovinazzi, and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. So we are starting 12th then for this Grand Prix. Didn't benefit from any penalties that any other drivers had. I think it was only Giovinazzi who got a five-place penalty. And that was actually for crashing into the back of me in practice. I wasn't recording at the time, but he just didn't slow down when I did and smashed straight into the back of me. That's why he has a penalty. That's the strategy we are going for. 14 laps on the mediums, eight laps on the softs. I'm aiming to be as quick as possible at the end of the race to maybe gain a few places as everyone else's tyres start dropping off. So let's see how this goes. Can we finish in the top eight once again, match or even better our Hungarian Grand Prix result here in Belgium? Underway then for the Belgium Grand Prix, not getting too bad of a start there as we seem to just try our usual trick of sweeping around the outside of as many cars as physically possible using the ERS boots to try and stay ahead of Albon who we've just given a slight tap, don't really want to be going side by side through Arouge and Radion with another car but I've just about managed to hold it off for now but expecting him to be very quick obviously he is on the faster tyres as well, Giovinazzi's had a cracking start as well. He started way down the grid. He's up into 10th place. Absolutely no idea how that's happened. I've gone a bit deep through Lacombe, and that might give great first lap. Keep it up. That might give Albon a chance to get ahead of me. Thankfully for me, it hasn't. We are up into eighth place. As again, I'm seem to enjoy running wide at this moment, and I need to be careful. They're on the softer tyres. Beat pretty much everyone around me. Pretty much everyone in the field seems to have started on the soft tyres, so just need to watch out for that, especially in these early stages. They are going to be quicker than me. You can see the top seven already streaking away. I think most of that's down to my mistakes rather than the slower tyres, as I need to keep off the kerbs as well. It's very easy to spin on the kerbs around this track, especially when I'm full of fuel on the medium tyres. Try and just defend down towards Blanchimont then from Albon it doesn't look like he's closing in on me so first lap four places gained very good very good start for myself did pretty well going around the outside of a few cars into turn one got a bit hairy with Albon but managed to hold on to that position let's see how we do once DRS becomes activated I feel like it could be a struggle to stay ahead of some of these guys That's Ocon sending it from absolutely nowhere. He's up into ninth place. Can't seem to do that chicane without running off the track. So there is DRS this time around. In the next of the track, no overtaking through the yellow flags. As Bottas is out. Ooh, championship leader. Championship leader out of the race. That might just allow me to get a bit of a jump on these guys. But I think once they open the DRS, there's not going to be a lot I'll be able to do to keep Ocon maybe even Albon behind me. Ocon is a long way back, but he's just going to start closing very, very shortly. You can see I'm moving defensive ever so slightly. Can I hold it off? Just about for now. So, seventh position thanks to Bottas's retirement. How long I stay there, I'm not so sure. Giovinazzi is absolutely flying on these fresh soft tyres behind me. He's really closed the gap up all of a sudden. And you can see how much he's pulled away from the cars behind and how much I've pulled away from them as well. I'm actually surprised by that. They do seem to be struggling now, those that started on older soft tyres. But Giovinazzi on the fresher ones, really closing up to me. Don't think there's going to be much point biting him too hard when he sends one down the inside probably on the main straight next time I'm out. 
don't think there's going to be a lot I can do about this. Try and force him, obviously, to go the long way around here into Lecombe. And hopefully, he won't be able to just go all the way around the outside. And I have held him off. This is holding me up ever so slightly. But I do think those front six guys, they're so far ahead. I don't think there'll be a lot I can do about them. So hopefully, we might get the benefits of keeping the Alfa Romeo behind us at the end of the race when we're on the soft tyres. Another yellow flag, that at least means, well, theoretically means he shouldn't be able to overtake me. So he has to stay behind me there. That's uh, helped ever so slightly. Stroll, I think that is now out of the race. And because Vettel's pitted, we're up into fifth. This race is looking pretty handy for us at the moment. I've got to say, highest result we've had this season is fifth place at Monaco. I can't see us matching that, but now that the racing point of Stroll seems to be having problems, could get into the top six, perhaps. I don't think we ever thought we'd see an Alfa Romeo and a Minardi battling for the lead of an F1 race, but that is what you've got at the moment. And he doesn't really look to be catching me too much on the straight line, even when he has got the DRS, I'm able to just use my extra fuel, use my ERS to just about stay ahead. And now he's battling with Sebastian Vettel, who I think, once he catches me up, he'll probably be able to make an easier job of getting past me. Coming into the pits then on this lap, and I think we are going to get dropped down into four, well, what position? Fourth position. Yeah, before we get there. See there, Verstappen just straight round the outside. Much fresher tyres. Okay, we lost the position. Try to keep focus. Much fresher tyres and just getting past us on the break. Sort of to be expected. Not doing too bad. Again, these aren't the guys we're fighting with. It's Giovinazzi, Albon. Those side guys, they're the ones I want to be beating in this race. It's a very awkward pit entry here. At Belgium. Here we then are into the pit, one and only time, we'll put the soft tyres on, probably come out, I don't know, 8th place I think at best, have to wait and see because it is not the longest pit lane here and hopefully it's a quick stop from the crew, Release, very please. handy indeed and we are going to come out then in okay, that 8th position, see 8th position, plenty of free air as well. Let's push and see where we can end this race. This is what I meant about the fresh tyre advantage. I've got so much more pace than Giovinazzi and Albon. We come to the DRS zone. The only problem I've got though is that I don't have much ERS. Can I go all the way around the outside of the Alfa Romeo on the brakes? This is going to be tough. Just about managed to get my way through. Now might be worth saving a bit of ERS on this next lap to make the next move a bit easier on Alex Albon, but we are already up into seventh position. We're catching the car ahead, but be aware that these tyres need to last till the end of the race. Well, thankfully, Jeff, the end of the race is only four laps away, which in a way is good, because I'll get the tyres to the end. But Albon is in a red ball and he is looking incredibly fast indeed. And I think it is going to be tough for me to maybe overtake him, but I'm going to give it my all, probably just a bit too far behind this time around, so just stay behind him, get as close as possible, get closer to him through La Source, maybe I've still got time to send a move on the Red Bull and get up into six. I mean, that Red Bull is just able to get off of La Source so much better than me, and I just cannot get close enough to him then. Into the chicane, this is... Oh, I can't see where else I'm going to get close enough. Maybe into the final chicane, the bus stop. Otherwise, this could be a bit tougher than I think. I just... I'm running out of grip slightly on these tyres to get a good enough exit out of La Source. And then he just pulls away coming out of there, and I can't make it up, even with DRS, ERS, rich fuel. This is going to be a challenge. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. Like Jeff said, final lap of the race. I've saved all my ERS on the last lap. Didn't use any 
whatsoever in the hope I can just get close enough to Albon here and have a go at him into really my last final good opportunity. I've got a very good one coming up through Eau Rouge and Radion. I've got so much more straight line speed. I can just cruise past him before we even get to the braking zone. I am up into up into sixth position. That was crucial. That was absolutely crucial that I did it then because I couldn't really see me getting close enough to him at any other point of the lap. Now it's all about not doing anything silly. Saving a bit of ERS myself to ensure on the one to the bus stop chicane he can't catch back up. But look at that. We've got ahead of a Red Bull on pure pace. No no massive bad luck for Albon. He had a bit of a bad start to the race, but other than that, he's not been involved in any major incidents, and somehow it looks like we are going to finish ahead of him and finish in sixth place. We've had a bit of luck. To the car ahead is 12.5 seconds. We've had a bit of luck with a few retirements for different cars. Bottas, I think, retired from the race. I'm not sure if Stroll retired or he just had a spin or whatever in the end but we're heading towards the finish line final time through the bus stop chicane we are going to finish in sixth position an absolutely fantastic result for ourselves that's the end of the race we'll see you in part Fermi. Giovinazzi I think deservedly drive of the day he had an absolutely stonking first lap classic circuits but they persevered to take the win here today Anthony Davidson how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament they were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car to maximize the strategy and to stay out of trouble and here we are a team that is no stranger to the podium taking their place on top once again a sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. Getting ourselves a decent amount of XP then. Staying on level 3 for now. Let's have a look at the results. And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Not the results our points leader wanted, but it certainly makes things interesting going forward. Some amazing talent out on the track today. But Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? My driver of the day has to be, no question, Antonio Giovinazzi. Such an assured drive from one of the sport's newer stars and a performance he can be very, very proud of. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Meanwhile, good work from Racing Point this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. As you can see in the constructors' end, Racing Point and Renault swapping round. Not too surprising, as I think Racing Point are nearly up to up to Red Bull on this game now in terms of pace. We stay seventh in the constructors. Look at that though, 8th in the Drivers' Championship, 2 points behind Carlos Sainz now. Starting to look a half-decent possibility that we could finish best of the rest. Just have to see how well I think Perez and Stroll do in the racing point. They're probably going to be my main rivals for that. There you can see the race results, second fastest lap of the race. Only Hamilton managing to set a faster lap for myself. It would have been nice to get that bonus point. De Vries finished down in 19th place. Russell managed to get ahead of him. At least he got ahead of Grosjean though. So there is there's some slight improvement from his performance. Just very happy with how that race went. Didn't expect to be as high as 8th when I came out of the pit. Managed to get Giovinazzi quite early on. Albon proved to be a bit tougher. Just about managing it. You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? Would you say that your rival is still on your level? Well, let's make the team feel good about themselves, you know. He has a better car than me, but... Can anything or 
anyone stop you? Appreciate your time. So as Claire alluded to there, we will have beat Lando Novice now in the rivalry, which will bump our driver acclaim up quite a bit more. There was a few times there in the last couple of races where it looked like he would finish ahead of me, but you can see there, he was just nowhere near me in this race. I get up to the magic 30 points, rivalry one. That's two out of two. I see who our next rival is going to be. Team and driver acclaim staying staying at the same level so we're not doing too bad so far and obviously because we hit all our targets that our sponsors set i think even the one to do 75 laps which belgium's the hardest circuit to do that around we get a nice bonus off the sponsors no damage which is very rare for me on a weekend if i'm being honest with you and a nice boost to the funds to try and improve this team even more and this could be important we might be getting up to the point of the season where the regulations change and we might have to start thinking a bit more about which parts of the car we improve if any for the rest of the season to see if we want to start in a higher position next time around absolutely delighted with that race so sixth place went really well see if we can do the same next time around then we are getting towards the end of the season now 14 races gone only eight remaining and it is the last of the traditional european races next we're making good profit against our running costs see only a week to go until the italian grand prix so we'll have to see how we do around monza expect a slipstream fest can we match how we did then in belgium as we finished in sixth place one of our best results of the season so far thank you guys for watching really really appreciate it if you want to check out any of my other socials you can find them in the description below and i'll see you guys next time around